Surprisingly, that went exactly by the numbers on the first attempt. It's kind of rare. Probably I'll... That means that, of course, on the next attempt, I'm going to crash. But, yeah, that went exactly as planned. So, it was about... Uh, what was that? I can't even remember the numbers now. But, yeah, it was about 180 to 190. I pulled the nose up so that the nose was uh, about even with the horizon. And it just flew right off at the predicted airspeed. Very good. So, I'm just going to stay right here over Crimps for now. Uh, flying the aircraft around and looking at the instruments and the as you can see the attitude indicator is like a standard Russian setup whereas on a uh, like a US aircraft the pitch scale would be following the aircraft around and you know you would just get a it's kind of like the opposite and here you have the aircraft that banks whereas on a US type indicator it would be the pitch scale of the banks so that's that's very normal okay I like that Okay, altimeter's working fine. Radar altimeter. Let me go to the a higher... Okay, found myself again. Okay, let me go to the higher scale. That's a 1200 meter setting right there. So, is this working? Uh, let me go back to level. I don't know. The radar altimeter might not be working as I had expected. Or I might have just not turned it on or missed something obvious. Okay, it is on. Okay, I think I'm misinterpreting something when it comes to the function of the radar altimeter here. Uh, let me let me play around with it for a while. I'll be right back. Okay, and it just sort of kicked back in. I I'm sure not sure exactly what happened there. That might just be the way that it works. But okay, it kicked back in, and now it's giving me some good. Well, what I assume is good. Yeah, that's uh, okay. So there's my barometric based on field altitude. So it's telling me on my barometric scale, I'm about uh, 230 meters. And this lines up more or less <laughs> with, uh, with what it should be. And I wouldn't expect a, a very, very early radio or radar altimeter to be dead on perfect at this point. And... Uh, I think it might also depend on bank angle. Hmm. Okay, so, yeah, something to play around with. I'm not going to focus too much on that. Because I just want to uh, focus on just some basic stuff and get it back onto the ground now. But, what else can I, uh, what else can I look at here? I'll be right back. I'm just going to play around for a second. Okay, and just continuing to fly around, just kind of keeping the field in sight here, since I don't know how to navigate yet. That's going to come up on the, probably the next mission we'll cover that. Yeah, I've uh, been just kind of playing around with the, cap the uh, cockpit pressurization controls, watching the gauges, seeing what happens there. If I go up here to what I assume is my dump valve, I can see that my, my delta between uh, cabin and outside ambient air temperature goes up. That's not exactly what I expected. So, it's closed right now, and it the uh, delta starts to go back down so I've got to think a little bit more about what that means and uh, figure out the exact setup and operation of that I haven't played with my flares yet okay it's a good good opportunity to do the signal flare thing so power on let me zoom back out so I don't miss anything okay that was a yellow flare okay that went out the uh, the uh, right side okay let me try Green flare. <laughs> That's very, very cool. Uh, no use that I know of in game, but still, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a neat feature. Something that was there on the aircraft doesn't really have any kind of a, a set function, but you can play with nonetheless. That's the kind of thing that I love to see in these types of modules. And I can see that on my fuel gauge, I'm starting to uh, get below the 1050 uh, liter setting. I'm assuming, again, that's liters. I, I believe that's what it is. But my aft tank line is not on, so I still am drawing off of the other tanks. I'm not just using the, the fuel in my forward fuselage tank that's right behind me. So I should have this light come on right here uh, once I start to burn off some more fuel. And I haven't played with my aileron hydraulic boost yet. Now, I mean, just as a... I don't think it's going to make any difference whatsoever at low altitude. And I'm just getting a feel for aileron response. Let me go off oh wow that actually makes <laughs> quite a bit of difference okay so now with that off I'm just doing straight up mechanical flight controls to the aileron it's a series of um, 
uh, push pull rods. And you can actually see the linkages. Like if, as I as I try not to crash. Okay, like as I do the aileron or the left and right stick, you can see this linkage uh, start to pull. I just got a master caution light of some sort on which I'm not sure exactly what that's associated with. Okay, that was associated with the aileron system. So apparently I did something... Let's see if I can recreate that. I have no idea what I did. That might have been tied into airspeed. Let me push it up just a touch. See, no, uh, I guess it's not tied into airspeed. I pull the throttle back in. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, something significant, but... Uh, yeah, anyway, push-pull rods. So you can see as I go fore and aft, you can see the rod down there uh, pushing and pulling. And that's just how the, the flight control works. Same thing for the rudder. You can see even better right here, in fact, the push-pull rod that is like a direct mechanical linkage to the uh, rudder. So, yeah, very, very detailed cockpit. But yeah, that's how the other ones work. So right now it's, uh, it's strictly mechanical. I'm going to go on, on the hydraulic boost. And now I've got that hydraulic assist, so now it's working up the hydraulic system as well and giving me more aileron authority. And I bet that's more pronounced as I get into higher air speeds and there are more air loads on the ailerons and it gets harder and harder to mechanically push those around. So it's good to see that working. Now looking at what else I can do. Actually, was I supposed to? I think I was supposed to on my gear. I, rem I distinctly remembering, uh, thinking that I need to do that. I wonder if I leave this in the up position, or if I go back to the neutral position after I take off. I might go back to the neutral position. That might be the thing to do there, and I might need to re-engage my lever. I can't tell exactly if it's got another tooth on the top, or if it's just... I don't think it does. I think it's just the one tooth on it, so when I have my little safety latch engage is keeping me from retracting the gear but doesn't necessarily keep me from extending the gear. Uh, one thing that I could do now that I'm thinking about it is climb to 2,000 meters and watch the operation of the oxygen system and I, as I mentioned in the previous video where I was figuring out the oxygen system I have the valve on I have the also the regulator valve on so right now it's uh, feeding the oxygen into the mask based on the airflow supplied by automatically by the oxygen regulator and as I get above about 2,000 meters I then should start to have oxygen uh, flow and start to get mixed in to my breathing air through the mask so let me go up for about 2,000 meters so climbing up through uh, 1,000 meters right now and this is going to work off a of barometric altitude so we'll probably be more like a like 1700 on this one, but I'm looking for my flow meter to start to uh, show me that I have oxygen flowing. So there's 1600 meters. And as I do this also, I'm watching my uh, cabin altimeter. So the cabin altitude is in fact uh, going up as my uh, real altitude goes up, as you would expect. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, no, the, that's that's correct, that's correct, and I'm not seeing any flow yet, it might take a little bit for this to kick in, but, yeah, I'll be right back, I'm going to play around for this and wait it out, I'll see you in a second. Okay, there we go, it kicked in at about 30, uh, 3,300 m uh, meters above ground level, at least in this case, so you can see the blinker going off and off, telling me that I have oxygen flow to the mass. And as I watch this, the pressure gauge is going to uh, steadily go down. And it looks like it's... <laughs> it looks like it's going down pretty quickly, in fact. So I, I've read some forum posts about, about the way that this works. And what will happen is when I run out of breathing oxygen... Uh, no matter what, and I don't know if this is uh, this is working as intended or not, but when I run out of breathing oxygen, uh, that's it. I, at that point, I, no matter what the altitude is, according to some reports, uh, you're just done. So I'm not sure exactly how long this is going to last under the normal operation, but I will find out eventually. But 
Okay, I can pull the uh, the throttle back in and start to uh, start to descend a little bit as I get my the uh, fuel light on, telling me that my number two tank is empty, and I've got about 800 liters. Uh, again, an assumption that's liters remaining. On my cockpit pressurization gauge, you can see that my cabin altitude is about 2,500 meters, as compared to the barometric altitude, which is more like 4,000 meters. So it looks like the cockpit is relieving at, on some kind of like a pressure schedule. And you can see that my delta between, uh, well, what would that represent though? If this is cockpit pressure, this is a delta between, I was expecting cock, between the cockpit and the ambient. I could actually be wrong on what my interpretation of this bottom gauge means. I know that it's a differential pressure of some kind, it, but then again, it might not be between cockpit and amp ambient because I wouldn't have expected to have that much of a delta at lower altitude. I'll tell you what, let me do, let me do a quick test here. I'm going to climb again and just see, see if I can scope out what's happening there. I'll be right back. Okay, so coming back up through 6,000 meters above ground level or above field elevation at least. I'm about 3,000 meters on my cockpit altimeter. And the delta is continuing to rise coming up on 0.3 a kil uh, or 0.3 kilograms per square centimeter. And I'm just trying to, it, it'll occur to me it's at some point exactly what's going on there. But just to break in real quick after the fact and I'm recording this part as I'm editing this video together, it is in fact delta between ambient and cockpit pressure. It was just the scale. It was the conversion in my head going from the metric value that I was getting right there to an imperial value. It just seemed like it was a lot less than it should be, and I couldn't quite account for that, but it is in fact what I thought to begin with. I'll skip ahead a little bit and come right back to the real-time audio track. Okay, I'm looking at my Mach meter, which I have <laughs> hitherto uh, ignored. Okay, so about a 0.65 and what am I, about 500 uh, kilometers per hour indicated. Coming up through 8,000 meters. Boy, this thing climbs like, <laughs> like you would not believe. Uh, I'm not even trying to climb this thing and it's still just going up, just, uh, well, not straight up, but uh, the, the 1950s equivalent to straight up. Okay, so, uh, you know, it looks like my oxygen consumption, the higher I go, I, I think the less oxygen is being consumed. So I think it might have just been that little, little altitude band, uh, that little 3,000 meter altitude band might have just had a higher consumption rate that I'm, that I'm getting up here at higher altitude. That's my theory, at least, because it doesn't seem to be going down at quite the same rate, even though I am, you know, still still breathing uh, oxygen off the system. Okay, so is it about time to bring it back down? I've got about 700 or 650 liters and I'm going to be upset with myself if that's not actually liters. That's just the sort of thing that I always misinterpret here. So what else is going on here? I think that's about all I'm going to see on this mission except for, of course, the landing. So let me go ahead and pull in the uh, pull in the throttle and begin my gradual descent back down to Krimsk. And as I do that, I'll start to read ahead in the landing procedure. So I'll be right back. <laughs> 